Hi everyone, it's Ann Huffman. Hopefully I'm back in business. I sure hope so. Um, I'm just going to uh, click back over and see if it's still recording. And if it is, I'll go ahead and get started with uh, mock-ups because there's so much that I want to tell you um, that you can do to really improve and enhance the mock-ups that you send to your customers. So let me just flip back over and make sure I'm still being recorded. And it looks like I am, so that is excellent news. So, hi up north, yes, yes. I, you know, I have to be careful what I say because Facebook is always listening. Now, that's great, so let me get back over here. There are so many different types of mock-ups that you can do. Let me just get rid of this. I was helping someone else. <clears throat> Is um, So I have several files up here. I'm just going to talk about a couple of them, uh, talk about each of them, and then I'll show you uh, how to do uh, one uh, in each category. Hopefully I will. Um, I had to turn the uh, ringer off my phone. So these are the glitter mock-ups, and I see a lot of people are um, doing the liquor bottles uh, with the glitter around it. So I figured I'd try it as well. And so I went on to Google, of course, and I found this one, which is Cavassier, and of course this is the typical Hennessy bottle. So see what we can do with it. Um, the other one is everyone is so excited about the lip biting there. And so I wanted to hopefully have enough time to show you how to create your own um, uh, there. And I have some foil over here that I'm going to use parts of. And I found these different dripping ones off of uh, Google. So I can delete that one there. And um, the next one is the floral and table settings. And this is when um, you could use this as a backdrop to your um, uh, uh, wine glass uh, or whatever glitter glass you have, whether it's a, a stemless or, you know, it has a stem on it. So I found a few things that I liked. Uh, and... So that's what that one is. This other one is called Condiments Mock-Up. I don't know if you all are aware of it, but there are some of us Nanas who go all out for our grandchildren's birthday parties, even to the point of soaking off the, um, the regular label that came with the mustard or the relish, any of the condiments, and then putting our own up there. Some have put the pictures of their grandchildren in there and the name. Some have put the themes if it's the trolls that you're using. And they're really simple to uh, to do. And of course, this is all uh, print and cut because it would be too much to try uh, and layer. But that's the condiments. Uh, and these are the templates. So <clears throat> I wanted to show you those as well. Yes, I uh, found them on uh, Google. And then the other one is this mock-up glassware. I want to show you how I did uh, some of this um, as well. Uh, and the last one is just me with a whole bunch of drinkware. So you can actually show with uh, tea or or um, wine, whatever, it could be cranberry juice in here, but to do some of those glitter glasses that actually shows a beverage in it that makes it a little bit more realistic uh, and to show what you can do and put on it. And to also show you like with these stemless glasses that you don't necessarily have to glitter them if you don't like all of, you know, the, the mess that glitter, uh, doing a glitter project comes with. You can just put your regular vinyl uh, on these glasses as well. So that's why I have those there. <clears throat> and I was just trying to get different bottles at this uh, point to see what I wanted to sort of play around with and show you different things with an actual beverage inside of it. 
So I, I'm thinking at this point, um, to go ahead and go with what is not quite as easy, is not difficult, just takes a little bit uh, more time in doing so. But I want to go back to the group and see if anybody has any questions or special requests because once I get into this, I'm not going to uh, slow down. I'm going to keep uh, moving forward to hopefully show at least one uh, example of uh, what I have in these other uh, categories. This is being recorded. Probably is going to be a long one since I'm trying to do so much in there. So it'll be one of those times that you have insomnia that you can just click on it and, and maybe there's a trick or a tip in there that will help you. Let me click back over to our group and see if anyone has posted uh, any questions. Hi, Pastor Sheila. Yes, yes, I'm excited. I'm excited. So does anyone have any questions before I get started? Hi, Nancy. Okay, so no questions. So yes, exactly. Hi, Teresa. Teresa, I think it's Teresa. So I'm going to go ahead and get started then. So it'll be, hi, Dominique. Okay, some more of you coming on here. Yes, I am, Pastor Sheila. I am going to show that. So like I say, this probably, this will be a long one. One that you'll want to come back and uh, uh, watch uh, later. So hi, hi, Michelle. Okay, so no other questions. I'm going to go into our virtual lab here and start showing you some of the things that um, um, can be done as far as mock-ups. And mock-ups are just examples uh, um, of what you're going to be uh, selling or, or creating yourself so people have a, a, a better idea instead of, can you do a glitter glass? Yes, what color glitter do you want? See if you can find that matching color, then you can show them this is what it would look like. And then they can say, ah, I think I only want glitter halfway or just on the stem or whatever. So anyway, let me stop babbling and hop back over here. So let's see, this glitter mock-up is first, but I'm gonna go to, I think it was mock-up glassware, yes. <clears throat> to show you exactly how I did this. And let's see, click off of it. Do I have a group? I guess I do. Ungroup. There we go. And so I found all of these on uh, Google, and they had that white background around them. And let's see if this one does. Nope, I've already did the um, trace and detach to get them to this point because uh, they did have the white background around it. Uh, let me just see over here if I find, let me grab this one and I'll do copy and I'll paste it here just to show you and I'll delete this one that I've done already. So for this one, I like to do everything over on the gray because it's misleading to me with a white background. So, and another thing is I like to hold the shift key down and make mine larger. And I'm going to select trace and I'll just move this trace over here so I have more uh, room to design. And I'm going to select trace area. What do I want to trace? And so I'm going to try to get as close to this as I possibly can. Well, actually, no, I'm going to do a better job this time. I'm going to duplicate this because that's what I keep telling you all to do. Duplicate it so you can look at it and have a visual to know uh, what it's supposed to look uh, like. When there's that much white space around it, instead of doing what I just started, which was immediately start tracing it, give yourself a few 10 extra seconds and go over and click on uh, the rectangle tool and draw it as close to the uh, object as you possibly can. Um, then go back and select the select tool, select both of these, 
and I'm going to go to the modify panel and crop. And what I've done is eliminated a lot of the um, extra white in there when it's time to trace it. So now let me select my trace area and I can pretty much just put it over this because I've cropped it. And this is where it starts. And remember with trace and detach, you're not worried about what's on the inside. You're trying to make sure that you get yellow all the way around uh, the, out, the outside um, of it. So I'm going to adjust this threshold just to get me to that top. And the more I go, you see it gets jagged on the end. Well, I did slide up there. Let me slide back down just to try and smooth it out. And I could really stop here because I have my yellow line where I want it, and I will. So I'll say trace and detach. Now I can pull this glass away, click on this, and delete it. So now I, uh, I know I'm going to be using this one again, this trace. So I'm going to leave this trace window up. So now I have my glass here. And how I did this one, which is my example, although obviously I picked the wrong font for the letter A, uh, <clears throat> is this. And I'm going to click on it and ungroup. Well, it must be ungrouped. Let's see. Yes. So there's the glass. This is the layer that I did of the um, uh, glitter. And then, of course, this was the letter, the app, uh, my uh, initial that I put there. So that's what we're going to do with this one. So with everything that you do, even if I forget to tell you, duplicate it. Uh, and that's what we're going to do and just kind of hide it here. And so what I want to do now is I notice that it's a trendy thing where everybody is putting a little message inside of the glass. And so people may want to, to get that. Uh, as well. So uh, in order to get that, I'm going to go to my color palette and click on um, the uh, patterns. And I've already shown you how to uh, drag and drop uh, uh, backgrounds uh, in, the, uh, in our library. <clears throat> And I have a lot of windows open, so I'm probably going to go through this delay as it makes up its mind what it wants to do. Okay, we should be bouncing back by now. The only windows I have open are um, the Chrome because obviously I needed it um, in order to do this live. So we're back. So now I'm going to um, drag the slider down just to get to my glitter. And remember I told you that it's all alphabetical. Uh, the, the top is everything that came with, um, there we go. Uh, came with um, Silhouette Studio Basic Edition. I added a, a subfolder for glitter. That's why I have the glitter in here. And let's see, I'm gonna click on this glass and put that one in there. That looks like that might've been what I used before, but let me see if I have any others in here. That's, um, that's sort of neat and they call this I don't know if they call that ombre because all the colors are still dark, but this, let's see, this is more of the ombre look. So if that's what you were doing for someone, this is the mock-up that you um, would um, send to them so they can see the, sh the shape of the glass, the size of the glass, and what it would look like. But I'm going to go now a step further, and that's why I have this duplicate back here. If I wanted to do um, this ombre, let's see. And some of the uh, glitter looks more chunky and some is fine. That's what you're going to have to look at when you are going through uh, Google trying to find the, um, the backgrounds that you're looking for.
with it. I think that's more the chunky to find. But anyway, let me go back, go back to um, this. And so what I did was I took the knife tool because when I click off of it, it's no longer the glass. It basically, the glass is now the shape of the uh, glitter. So I'm going to take the knife tool and you see where I wanted an angle there. I just went at an angle across the glass trying to figure out where everyone was putting theirs at. So I click there and go back to the select, move that out of the way. Actually, I could really delete that. So I have this now. Bring my glass back here. Let me make yet another copy and hide it. And so with this, I put this here. I need to bring it to the front because it's sitting in the back. So I position this right here. I'll bring it up a little bit. So just, you know, you get a little bit of the, the bottom of the glass in there. And the only thing that I did different uh, with this to get that effect like it's inside the glass is I took the uh, transparency slider and just started making it lighter and lighter until it looked like it's inside of the glass. <clears throat> um, so it looks like it's inside of the glass and I could take this letter, this initial, I can click just on that initial and it went to the back, so I'll right click and bring it to the front. And I could put uh, that um, initial in there or whatever it is that you want to put inside uh, of it. But we know it would be difficult to do the ombre um, uh, for the inside. So if I went with this green, um, that's a I'm going to stick with this color because I could be clicking colors all day. But your magic comes in with the transparency to make it look like it is on the inside of the glass. You're looking through the glass and you see that uh, uh, there. 53 might be too much. And so the next thing is now that you have what you want on the inside, if that's how you were doing it, then uh, you're good to go. Put whatever you want to put on the outside of it, be it another image or just an initial. That's really up to you. Now, <clears throat> that's how that one is done, which was this one here. Put it there. And I'm going to go back <laughs> with this and uh, make another duplicate of it because, let's see, I want to um, okay so now you say I'm not going to glitter this all the way to the top um, I want to uh, come down a little bit from the rim so it's back to the knife tool and before I go to the knife tool, let me put this one next to it to kind of give you an idea of where you want to be. I could actually move this. Let me bring it to the front and place it over this one. I think I'm exactly maybe over it. And with the glitter highlighted, slide my transparency so I can see the glass sort of, kind of sort of in between it. And so now... I'll go to the knife tool and I want, I'm want. i going to hold the shift key down so that I get, uh, let's see, you want to go half of the glass to get my straight line across. And I'll click here, move that out of the way. Let me click back on this and bring it back up to full transparency. And there you go. So you have it and now you can put whatever they want. Uh, to be said on it. That's what would go <clears throat> on it. So that's the two styles uh, with it. And uh, let me see. Oh, I cut that too. <laughs> I didn't know it cut all the way through. Well, that glass bit the dust. 
So with this one, let me show you what I did. Some of you are so smart, you've already figured it out just by what I did with the uh, other ones there. So I don't need this trace thing anymore. So for, and I'm not going to um, go through trying to find fonts and all of that. That just, I mean, I get lost in a rabbit hole with that. So just imagine this has, you know, whatever, you know, on it. Because what you want to get is this look and this look. And so again, now let me go ahead and make uh, some some duplicates of this uh, glass here, and I'll just kind of sort of put them there, and I'll make one more. And the reason I'm doing that is because, uh, again, as you notice, once you apply the glitter to it, you've lost the glass itself. So now I'm going to click on this glass, and let's say. Um, That's the color that I'm looking for. Florida State Seminoles. I love some Seminoles. So I have this now. So what I want to do is to maximize this with maybe one cut, and that is to get the knife tool. I, If I want to do just this full stem, I'm going to hold my shift key down and hope that I am going straight across. And if I am, now I have that part and I have the stem. And I'm going to click on this stem part and duplicate it. And the reason that I'm duplicating it is because I want to go back to the knife tool, hold the shift key down, and I'm trying to get just the uh, base of uh, the glass. There we go. So I have it. So I basically have this piece. I have the base now that I can change. I have this whole piece over here. And Lord, don't let me use them all up. Uh, I, and this one here, we probably won't go all the way to the top. So I'll go ahead and use the knife tool, hold the shift key down so that I can get you know, a nice straight line across it. That might be too far down, but you know, it's all in your preference. So now let me do a little smart thing here, which is duplicate. And when I duplicate it, I'll just go ahead and give it that color. Okay. So I have an extra one there because now what we're going to do is bring that glass back. And I'll just click on the glass and send it to the back because if you want to do one with just the uh, glitter on the bottom, you're like, that's all I need. My customer doesn't want anything else. Then you can put, you know, whatever you want to put up here, you know, stick it over here. And if you don't, let's see, let me just duplicate this and let's see. Yeah, you can see why I did that. So uh, that's one, and I'm just going to leave it on top. Another way that you can do it is very popular, and let me bring that, this to the front, is to where it's just, that looks kind of crazy with that behind it. Let me group it and zoom out so I can make some more room here. Go over there. So we <laughs> come back. So we have the half look. Um, we have just the stem that is on there. And um, let me duplicate this one again. Or let me just group all of this and move it on here. Or we can take, we can have uh, this look to where you're putting everything else everywhere, but you just want to have uh, a glitter base. Or I'll use this other one and 
maybe I'll be smart and not use the last one. And I'm going to bring this to the front. You may want to have the base. Actually, you may want to have this look on yours. Bring it to the front. You might want this look and let me bring to the front. This could be the look that you want. So you have different options, all basically starting with this one glass. Um, and, you know, of course, whatever special glitter color that you're working with, try to find that color either where you're going to buy it from uh, so you have something that you can really show to um, your your customer. Um, here's what it's here's what that color is going to look like. Uh, this is what you're you're working with. So let me ungroup because I only want this base here, and this is the color that I'm shooting for. So it just makes it look a whole lot more uh, realistic by them seeing the glass uh, that's there. That's all I did with this one, and let me show you the one in the middle. And the uh, cool thing about it is even though, uh, let me grab is that. Make another duplicate to be able to show you what I did with this one, <clears throat> which is really not a whole lot. Let me zoom in to show you. I basically took the base That you see and I know these colors don't go together but by now you all should know I it's hard for me to to make a decision on what to use I have these two and I'm going to take this four in here And I'm just going to leave all this the same there. So the only difference that I did were these little diamonds. Uh, and you don't have to have the designer edition to use this because I did not go to the rhinestone feature. What I did instead was uh, uh, came over to the uh, drawing tools held down my shift key and it's still making that other one there. Let me just go back now and uh, click on it to make it this color. It really doesn't matter yet um, the color of it because it's all about the diamond. So I have this color um, um, glitter. So now what I want to do is go over to my library and come down to my patterns. These are the ones that I've added. And let's see, should let me go to rhinestones. And honestly, I have no idea what color rhinestone to uh, put on it. So I'm going to find something really crazy color that does not even go with it. Uh, so I'm going to double click this. And and I don't know why it opens up in a new one. It's supposed to open up in the same screen that I was in. So let me just click on it. I'm holding the shift key down to reduce the size uh, of it. And I'm just doing that because I've got so many windows open. And I know this software uh, is uh, a memory hog, so I'm going to cut and 
here. I'm going to close it. I don't need it. Now if I can get back to where this is where I was and I'm going to paste. And so now uh, what I'm going to do is take the circle that I made. And I'll resize it later. Uh, I'm going to bring it to the front and I'm going to go with I think this blue facet and I'm putting it right where I want it to be. And while it's highlighted, I'm holding the shift key down and I'm clicking on the rhinestone. So I should have two things selected here. I'll go to the modify panel and say crop. Now I have my little rhinestone that I'm going to place uh, over there. And so I have to really decide how big do I want these things to be as to how realistic it is. So I put position one there and I go to this uh, uh, replicate panel and with it highlighted, see the arrows over here? I'm just gonna keep saying duplicate, keep giving me more, more and more and more of these. And the last one, I need to duplicate it because I think I did two here so I need to shrink these down a little bit smaller so that you know they make make sense um, for the size wise but make sure you're able to put this many on a glass because if you're selling to someone that's a stickler like me and I see three in the mock-up I'm not gonna be happy if I see two when I get it so let me just go over three might be a bit too much so I will take that one and bring it down here and position it and just keep duplicating and that might be a bit too much for it. So that's what I did with those and of course I uh, brought them down a little bit so and at this point I'm going to hold the shift key down and kind of bring the uh, glitter up a little bit because there's too many rhinestones to try to go in there and group. So that's how I did that. And then you would write whatever it is, you know, that you want to put on it. That's, that's how easy it is. That is just how easy it is. It takes more time trying to determine what you want to say and uh, finding uh, your glitter uh, if you haven't already start building uh, a folder of glitter and of, you know, foil, whatever it is that you work with, that's where your time is going to come in at. And I'm not creative at all. So because you all might decide you want to do more than that uh, with it, you might want to put. Um, I'm going to do H this time. Um, and I'll go with impact because it seems to be one that everybody likes. <clears throat> so I'm going to go here, make it bigger. It's probably, yeah, it sits there on top. And maybe spread it out a little bit. And I'm just using the arrows on my keyboard to get here. So now what I want to do is I'm going to take this extra little stone here. Um, and it's behind it. So I'm going to bring it to the front. And in essence, what I'm going to do is start putting rhinestones uh, inside of this letter H and then remove the letter H. Then you have the letter in uh, rhinestones. These are not the hot fix rhinestones that you would put on a shirt. These are the ones that you use uh, the um, uh, E6000 or some of the Gem Tac other type um, uh, glue for it. So I'll just go here, go here. Uh, let's see, this one goes down, down. Here. Up. And you can just kind of see oh, where I'm going with this. <clears throat> Let me click on this one and go down. This one and go down to the left. 
and go up. Here and down and over one. Okay, so now I'm going to try and get just that H and get it out of the way. So you might want to put another one in there, but that's just whatever creative way you want to do it. Uh, so that's all I have as far as the glassware uh, mock ups. So let me zoom out, make sure I have everything in here. And let's see if anybody has joined, has questions on what I've done so far, because I'm going to keep moving um, on to um, the next one. Oh, and while I have this up here, I may as well go ahead and show you what the floral table settings. Obviously, this is not, and I'm going to copy it. What was I on? Yes. So let me zoom in now, and I'll hit paste. And if this was the right color, you could basically even put, you know, some flowers or something around it. I'm not holding the shift key down so that I can sort of manipulate this uh, to make it, you know, where I want it to go. Like the flowers are, you know, laying on top is as if you're looking down uh, on it. So these are things to, when you're out there searching and building your um, library of elements for the floral, look at some of these as well. I think I picked, um, trying to see one that might, work. So I'm going to select this one and go back over here to glasses and get rid of this and uh, hit paste. And I'm going to send it to the back. So it's in the background. I'm holding the shift key down. Trying to really, well, let me move this out of the way. And let me group all of this. <laughs> That's the smart thing because I'm going to have to resize it. But this would be sort of like a background to let your person have a general idea of this is how this might look on that particular table uh, setting. So here I have the glass now. I'm holding the shift key down and I can shrink it down um, so that they can basically see what it might look like up against, I'm clicking the wrong thing, up against a vase or uh, whatever table setting that they have, or they'll know that maybe they like this color pink and they wanted this uh, teal uh, glitter, but looking at it together is really not making sense uh, at all. <coughs> this is like just the background. Of course, you'll do a much better job than me because you'll go over and get the uh, rectangle and draw it around it and crop out uh, the names and stuff like that. But it's just more of the effect of here's what you want and this is what it what they would look like there. I guess if I put this here. And I don't know my rotation. I'm not that good with that rotation to make it kind of uh, this glass like it's facing the person that's sitting there. But this just gives you a, good, a general idea to be able to present to them. So I'm going to stop here and take some questions. And I'm going to go here and show you with this one. <clears throat> Okay, so Pastor Sheila, I showed how to do the three colors on the glitter. I just found it on Google. Uh, I think I put in ombre, O M B like boy, R E glitter background, and that's how I got those colors. So, Teresa, I just answered you. Yes, I found them on Google. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hi, Shakia. Hi, Loretta. Okay, so no other questions that I can see. Your Facebook is showing me, so let me jump back in here, and let's do these so I can show you how I went from this 
to this. And it was a little time consuming, but not really just uh, really hard to do. So the first thing I have to do, obviously, for, for my eyesight is I have to make these things bigger so I can see what I'm working uh, with. So I have this one come back. There we go. I've learned the hard way, make a duplicate. Um, and let me send it to the back so that I can keep looking at this one here. So the first thing that I said was, you know, um, everything else up here is fine. Uh, I'm not going to have any problem at all with um, my uh, glitter. So what I need to do is to try and cut out the label on this. And I think that I also cut the top, but we'll see because I have another one there. So I went to my knife tool, held the shift key down, and tried to get a straight line across, all the way across. And I can tell from there that I certainly apply. Okay. So that's my top right here of my uh, bottle. And so now it was time for this label. In order to get that label to work, I had to trace it. And I did a trace and detach. And so I selected my trace area. And I tried to stay as close to uh, the label as I possibly could, although it went over a little bit. And remember, the only thing we want is for the yellow to be all the way around the outside. We're not concerned with what's going on on the inside. So I'm going to stop here and start using my up and down arrows. 92. I'm trying to get over here now in the little bit of area down there. For some reason, let's go 98, 99. Oh, I should have this area over here easily. Hmm. I'll do this 100. Nope, I knew that wasn't going to work. So let me extend this out a little bit. Maybe I'm too close uh, on it. The reason that it's not doing it. So let me go back now. Yes, now I'm getting more uh, of it. I got that side. So let me increase now. I'm trying to get this bottom and this side over here, and I might be too close to the edge there. The reason, yes, now I have more of it. So that might be the reason down here at this bottom. If I bring it down, and let's see if I bring the top. There we go. So I have yellow around all of my edges. Actually, I have too much yellow around it because I'm not trying to. Let me do trace and detach. I wanted to get just the label, but as you can see, I ended up with this square where I have some of this on here that I really did not want uh, to get on here because this part of it is really easy now. I just go over here to um, the glitter and um, there we go. Stripes, there we go, glitter, come on. I'm going too fast here. There we go. So I guess uh, that's too chunky. Who knows what color is chunky? Just trying to find something closer. Maybe that's it. So with that, this is pretty much a done deal because I'm just going to use my arrow key, my down arrow key on the keyboard to get to where that's filled. 
But for this, I still have some work that I have to do to it because just bringing it back in here and positioning it did not do what I wanted because I wanted to get just the outer uh, edges of this done. <clears throat> and let me just look and see what I did for this one. First, let me put it over here, hold the shift key down and I'm going to try and get to the size of this one. I think that's probably, I'm probably really close to it. Yeah, that looks like it is because I'm going to uh, ungroup and ungroup again. Do I have one more? No. So now I have this label, and this is where I'm trying to go here, not with this around the edge. So I'm going to click on this purple now and move it out of the way. Go get this other bottle over here that I. Uh, was smart enough to make a duplicate of it because I need to go back now and recreate it. So I'm holding the shift key down and I'm drawing my line right underneath that bottle. <clears throat> Bye. So out of the way. And then for this one, in order for me to put this one in there, I, I'm still going to have to work on it. And that was the the, the whole issue or what's more time consuming because you the only way you're going to do it is going to be trace and detach. And I thought that if I got really close to the edge, I would be able to achieve my goal. But as you can tell, uh, I've got everything going on there except for uh, my edge. So... And this would sort of be, I guess, the reverse. Somewhat, if I did trace and detach, I'm still going to end up with some of that. And I think what I ended up having, come on back, ended up having to do, well, it's playing games now, is... <clears throat> yeah, it's really... So I don't know what's going on with it. So uh, where was my brown color? Here. Uh, I've been putting this on there, but what I ended up doing to get to that point was I used the knife tool. And I cut as close to the edge as I possibly could. Um, apply. Just trying to eat away at it. And is it time consuming? Yes, it is. But guess what? You only have to do it one time. And that's how I got to this point, was just carefully um, cutting uh, those edges on it. So this would be the Hennessy bottle here. And I'm just using the down arrow to uh, I guess I can push it back to push it back on. You already have the labels separated, uh, like I had this one uh, that I spent all that time on. Save a file that just says the Hennessy uh, label, because then you don't have to worry about ever having to recreate something, uh, do a trace and detach on it again. <clears throat> now, this one with this bottle, you're going to have to make it as big as you can. Let me get rid of this. <clears throat> because one of the things that you want to do is to take this little circle, um, 
hold down the shift key and draw a circle and let it go and take your finger off the shift key and now distort this circle until it fits over um let me do transparency so i can see the um logo behind and I don't see well, so I have to really zoom in. Okay, so I have more than what I need there. So just bringing it down, because all I'm trying to do is to get um, over this. Gold part of, of this logo. And it's going well one way. So let me use the arrow key and see if I can use this one to pull it down some. So I may not have it perfect, but here's what my objective is. Let me zoom back out now. And again, this is something um, that once you spend the time to do it once, you never have to worry about it again. So with this Hennessy bottle, I'm going to duplicate it and put it over here. And um, with this one now, I'm going to click on um, that circle that I have very light and transparency. I'm holding the shift key down and I'm clicking on the label. I need to go to the modify and I need to say crop. That's what I'm trying to get is this label here that I can put back on this bottle. And I have an awful lot of white I need to get rid of. So I'm going to go over, do my rectangle, try to get as close to this bottle as possible. And yes, it still has that on it. Go to color. I can go to wait, I need to click it. Click here, go no color. So I see how close I'm getting to um, the bottle because I want to get rid of some of that extra white that's there. So now with the bottle selected, I'll hold the shift key down and click the, um, uh, let's see, I've got <coughs> my rectangle and the image there. So I'm going to say crop. Now I don't have all that extra white stuff uh, going on with this bottle. I did not change the bottle size. So I need to make a duplicate of it and not change uh, the size in any way, shape, form, or fashion. So I'm going to get this knife tool out. And really, this time, I think I will come about here, apply. Come on, did I not go all the way across? OK. Let me click on knife and do click on auto here and hold the shift key down and try to go all the way across. Now that should have worked. Nope, and it didn't work. Wow. Okay, come on. I'll start way out here then if you want me to. And that's not what I wanted, but let's see if that makes you happy. If not, it's something wonky going on with uh, with my my uh, software. Ah, finally we get somewhere. So now we go back here to this bottle, and I need to go back to my glitter because I have an extra bottle here already that I'm going to get the label off of it. <clears throat> So I'm going back to glitter. By the way, I have not done any of these uh, bottles before. Oh, I know what I didn't do. Uh -uh. OK. So this is the same thing. So I just made a little extra work for myself. In a rush, I forgot to do my trace and detach. So now I have to do it. And I'll come down a little because it's kind of jagged. I really only want the yellow edges. 
So I'm going to now say trace and attach. I have the bottle. I no longer have this. There we go. And with this bottle, I need to do the same thing. Um, that bottom looks like it needs it a little bit more. So I'll say trace and attach. I should have left the other part on. There we go. So I have it. I'm going to delete it. Now I can go back and click on this and make this bottle whatever colors we, we want it to be. I guess that's a good color. So I, I can put the you click here and bring the top back over to where it fits. Lord, I don't remember where this is. So let me bring it to the front. Do I bring to front? Okay. And I'm guessing that that's probably the proper placement for it. And then with this one, I'm just going to go ahead and again, make another duplicate of it because I need to uh, trace just this label. That's all I want is the label. Oh, I just, all I want is a label on this and I'm not getting it on this side. So this is going to force me to have to do some more cutting as well. So tracing these labels are not the easiest thing to do, but once you get it right, then you never have to worry about it again. So where am I at here? Uh, too far. So if I do trace and detach, I'm going to pick up some of the brown in it when it's done. Let's see what I have. Not what I wanted, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my software because it should not have even been concerned with what was in the middle uh, with this. But I guess in essence, it kind of helped me out in that maybe move this out of the way, click here, delete this, select all of this. I'm going to hold the shift key down and click on these little boxes because that's just little remnants out there that we don't need. Okay. And I'm going to right click and say group. And I'll go ahead and just assume it's going to be on the bottom. So I'm going to say bring to front and to try and place this uh, on here. And obviously this green color isn't working for it. But I do know that I've already done one of these labels. Uh, but the problem with the one that I did, let me zoom out so I can see what I have to work with here. Who did I finish? this one. So let me, nope, I didn't. I guess I'm, I don't know what happened to my other one. I guess I deleted it because I was going to use that label and put it over here. So that's the thing is probably the first thing I would suggest you do before you try anything 
is to get these labels. That's going to be a trace and detach. That's how you're going to get them. Because uh, even going to Google and just Googling them, if you notice, it still has to curve uh, to match the contour of that bottle. So uh, I have one already, and for the one that's flat, so I'll post it in the group in case somebody uh, is going to do it. But remember, it is for a flat bottle, not the round bottle. And likewise, um, I'll go ahead and just select all of this. Move it over here. The same thing would apply to this bottle. I'm just going to hold the shift key down because I need to make this. Yeah, that's something really weird. I'm trying to go up and it's going sideways. You need to make it really big uh, because, again, you want to do a trace and detach on this label. So, and you want to get this part here in the center because, uh, of course, you want to do it right. So it comes back to trace and detach. And I just don't like the fact that it covers everything that I don't want. So that, that forces me to reduce this down. But when I do it, that's all I get to work with is it. And I'm picking up stuff that I don't really uh, want um, at all. I'm down to a one. So even if I stop here, I know I, I see some of it in there, but all I wanted was around here and around here and around here and around here. That's all I wanted. <clears throat> so I probably should have just enlarged this so big that the only thing on the mat was this band around this bottle. So when it was ready to trace, it would not have seen anything else. So now I have that. That's the only thing that I was able to salvage from it was this which means that I would have to make a duplicate of this and try and get just the purple on each side and then just this light gold band on it. A lot of work, yes, but you only have to do it one time because you'll always have this. If these are the type of bottles uh, that there's a demand for them. So let me just <clears throat> click back and see if there's any questions on this and then I'll go to the biting lips, and I'm going to end it at that. Back to the group. Yes, up north, I got those flowers to lay flat. I'm a magician, huh? <laughs> Not at all. <clears throat> All I did was release um, the shift key that, you know, holds the proportions. And I just started, I grabbed one of those little uh, boxes and start pushing in. And that's what made it lay down. Hi, Marcel. So let's see. You know, I I saved my, I, you have business edition too, I think, Pastor Sheila. So for us, you can save it as a SVG if you plan to share it uh, in a Facebook group. Other than that, you can just save it, you know, as regular Studio 3 because your is your file that you're going to be using uh, all the time. So um, I, I typically don't share these uh, outside of my groups. Because some people get way too hung up, I think, on on um, on on being copyright cops that want to be the chief of copyright. So I don't do it outside of the group, but it doesn't matter. So let's see. I'm scrolling. I don't see any other questions. So I'm going to go to uh, these biting lips at this point. Come back here. 
I'm going to close this and I'm not going to save the changes. And let's see where my drinkware I can close it. This might give me. And let's see the glass glassware I can close it might give me more RAM so it, it'll be nicer to me but I just want to point out like with this shoe all they did if I can let me cut it and I'll open up a new window just to show you with this shoe Basically what they did, there are a lot of other flowers and stuff probably all around. They may have gotten that stem, but they just had a bunch of flowers in there. They had the shape of the shoe that they wanted. They put it on top and cropped. That's all that is. So it, it looks really neat and I like it a lot, but it's something that you all can easily do uh, as well. So I let me undo that part of it. Um, another touch I found were these rose petals, depending on what you want for your glass. I think this is one that would look good with the glass uh, there. And with these, <clears throat> all I did was grab here and start pushing up. That's how I got it to lay down. Just went so look for some of these, and I think the keywords I used was um, fresh flower. Uh, oh goodness, I can't even think anymore. Corsage is what I said, and I said fresh flowers because they will look more realistic. Look more realistic with the mock-up that you're doing. This is another thing uh, as well that you can cut out uh, this uh, name card and you might want to put your wine uh, glass or something next to it. So props always help things look a lot better. I think that this one is really nice as well of a background. It can sort of have that glass to put your glass here if it ties in with these colors. So that was why I uh, had this one here to show you all just to kind of wake up you know, your um, creative juices with it. Another one, and these are all high resolution, so no matter how big I make them, they're not going to get distorted or anything like that. You might put your, 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 your glass here or whatever just to show um, <clears throat> however way you want it to look. I mean, it, it's, it's up to you. But that's what these are. I probably would sit a glass like right, right in here so they'd have an idea of what it looks like. So I'm going to close this and say no to changes so I can keep everything I had. And I'll close this one. I don't want to save it. <clears throat> I told you all about this. So all this is, uh, is um, um, what? Wow, my mind just went blank. Um, let me can't believe that. Trace and detach. That's all that you're going to do is to try to get it right over one. And all you need is one. And you get the one that you want without all those lines back there in the back and still get your yellow lines. And that's why I have these down here as well. But I think that I use the, the uh, keywords condiments um, condiments mock-up, condiments, uh, Disney character condiments, just to see what they have. <clears throat> and of course, you use the uh, sticker uh, paper so that you can just stick these on top of those condiment bottles. So that's what that is. You might find one with the shape already because with this, you really... Um, don't need um, this outer, this black line on the outside. So we actually could have, and I'm just going to do this trace and attach to get this so it'll just stop. <clears throat> and 
that is so weird. It didn't bring me anything but that. But what I was going to tell you is you actually could trace this and not trace and detach um, if that made it easier for you and then just place uh, whatever image or the image of the grandchild on top of it. But it's just to give you an idea of these are things that are out there that you can can do. The same thing goes for those um, Capri Sun um, little pouches. You name it, you know, you can find a label that's on it and do the uh, trace and detach on it and just really be creative. So I'm going to I'm going to close this one. Say no to changes and get over here to these biting lips. <clears throat> and so let's see. I'm going to This is one I trace. This is a trace and detach from this picture here. Um and so I'll go ahead and do that. This one is a trace and detach from this picture here. <clears throat> and I went to Google and let me um, make this bigger. I saw this and immediately I started to think, you know what? This would make a good backdrop for this. And so I knew that if I was going to trace it, I'd have to, I would have to trace. There's just no way around it. I could not get away with trace and detach. So I'm going to move this up a little bit to get all of these in here. I think I have them now, and I'll say trace. And so let's move this out of the way. Let's move her <coughs> out of the way. And I'm going to click on it because I want to get rid of the square that's around it and say release compound path. <laughs> I hope it catches up to me. Great. All I want is to get rid of this outer box here. And I'll hit the delete key. Now I have all of these. So I'm going to now highlight them and they look a hot mess. That's why it's print and cut. Uh, and I'm going to group these and, and you see how I'm making my color, my, I have to find my gold. <clears throat> and in finding my gold, actually, I'm over on the glitter side, so that's what's popping up. I was looking for um, the... Um, dropper to be able to give it that color but in using this if this is the gold that i want to use i need to go over to my line and i've got to get something close to it so i get rid of that red around me and now it looks more realistic so now i would click off click again come on catch up So I would send this, well, let me bring this up to the top, figure out exactly how much of this I need or I don't need or how the flow is going and is it going the way that I really want it to go for it. So if this is where I want to be, I'm going to right click and I'm going to send it uh, to the back. So. I, we see where she's dripping at. So I could come over and use the knife tool or I could do the box and crop it out. But I'll use, go ahead and use the knife tool to cut through this. I think I did a smart thing in closing those other windows uh, if this one little project of cut has taken up all of this uh, memory. <laughs> and 
And for that uh, glitter, I think I searched Google for glitter mist, and I wasn't concerned about really what color I saw because I knew I was going to trace it. And then I was going to apply a glitter color to it. So, I, so if you find something out there that you like, don't really get hung up on the color uh, of it. Just make sure that you do have a glitter color that you want. And it needs to be uh, a sub folder in the patterns folder in your library. And you're just dragging from your desktop uh, and adding them to the uh, rhinestone subfolder. Well, I did rhinestone, I'm sorry. Glitter is what you would be uh, clicking on glitter. First, you need to create the glitter uh, folder. And that's just by clicking on patterns, right clicking on pattern, and it'll say new folder. And then you name it glitter and hit enter. And in a couple seconds, it'll pop up alphabetically in this order. Then you uh, click on the glitter so that that one is open. And then in your windows, you're just dragging it from there and dropping it in there. Um, and usually within a couple of minutes, it shows up uh, in uh, the order over here. And you see that I was trying to be organized and I have all of these different categories. So in my field pattern, uh, they're all alphabetical. So the first thing that shows up after the default uh, patterns that come with Studio is, is going to be like all animal prints uh, that I have. <clears throat> so that's really how simple that is. But you have to invest time in surfing the internet to find things that you're going to need um, it will save you a whole lot more time than uh, cramming at the last minute trying to find uh, some of these things. <clears throat> okay, come on back anytime now. Mm, not responding. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Looks like it's just been sitting there on 99% for the longest for some reason. Well, while it's doing that, let me just click back over and see if there's any questions. Okay. Mm, let's see. I don't see any other questions. I'm hoping this thing soon goes away here. It's like a stuck. <clears throat> So now I've given you on top of an assignment that's going to be due in about uh, 20 days. I've given you more homework to try to uh, gather um, these backgrounds. And when you're looking at glitter uh, backgrounds, just keep in mind at the same time that it seems to be the trend now that everybody has that wood grain background. So you may as well look for some wood grain uh, as well. Uh, everything, every kind of background you can think of. Uh, if you like um, to do the animal prints, then, you know, start, a, create a folder and just start, you know, um, save as and copy it to that particular folder so you can start building things uh, up a lot. Oh, goodness. Let me go back in here and see, will we have luck? Nope, oh, it's still doing the same thing. So I um, I don't know how long I'll, oh, okay, so what I was just about to dish you, I sure was. Okay, so let me click here. Yes, I have to select whatever it was. So I'm hitting the delete key. I know it's more of it in here. But this just gives you an idea. And that's probably some too. Yep. Nope, I don't want you to do all of them. 
him just this. Just to give you an idea on how you can do some of this yourself. Now, I'm going to delete this, and that's what I was trying to recreate this, and I probably should have found some mist that was a lot smaller, uh, but that's something that uh, you will have to play around with. The one thing that I wanted to, um, I'm just going to, key down and click to deselect it okay and I'm going to right click and just group all of these So what I wanted to show you all is I've seen some that have been a little bit different. Um, I'm going to ungroup these lips and I have the teeth because I wanted to try something out uh, myself. And so I'm going to try and find some red glitter. That certainly isn't red. That is a hard color to find is red, just to get it red, red, red. And I guess that's as about as red as I'm going to be able to get uh, with it. But what I want to do is to take these colors here, and probably this is the one that I want. So I'm going to draw, well, go back. And duplicate it. Now I'm going to draw my box around this gold. Best as I hold the shift key down and grab the rest of it because I want to crop it out. Because all I want, come on, really? Okay, I must not have my other square selected. So, there, hold the shift key down. Now I have both. Okay, prop. Because this is what I wanted to try and get <clears throat> right here. And I'm going to probably take this, I'm going to duplicate it just in case what I'm thinking in my head does not really work out. Uh, let me go over here to pattern. I just want to give it a color so that I can see it. And I need to bring it to the front. And this was not quite as gold as I would like, but it's highlighted. I'm holding the shift key down. And about to forget to duplicate. So I'm going to select both of these now and do crop. And what I was trying to accomplish is to be able, someone had shown, had asked me about making a gold tooth. So evidently this gold is not my right color gold. I thought that it would have been. Maybe that's the yellow gold. But this is just to show you that, uh, and I should have found some uh, foil that was not in a roll, a flat piece, that if you trace it to where you can have separate pieces uh, of it, and let's just see here, how big can I go to get there? So duplicate again. Actually, no, <clears throat> I just realized I've got some examples over here, so I'll just use this one, uh, this picture instead, because I see enough of a gold foil that's there. So I'm going to take this tooth and try and position it where I think I'm going to get the most gold out of it and hold the shift key down for both <laughs> and do crop, excuse me. And if it wasn't for the texture on it, you could basically give the person um, a 
whole gold grill, and I'm just going to drag this down to bring it to the size of the tooth. You could do the same thing with it. And people would be wondering how in the world you did it. But find something that is a bigger piece that has all of your foil in it, and it's just one flat color. Uh, and not these ridges in it, because that's what's going on there. This one, I have it in here because, let me just make it a little bit bigger. This one is easy to trace as well. And <clears throat> some of those little uh, marks across the teeth, you'll be, if when you do release compound path, you'll be able to click on it and get rid of them if you want to. But all of these teeth, are going to be separate pieces. So after you trace the lips and put it whatever color you want, color or uh, foil color, if you find some flat foil when you're searching or glitter, if that's what, you know, the look that you want from it. But each one of these teeth could be, you know, you can make it gold if you want to. That's, <clears throat> that's what you can do. And if um, someone has really cute gap between their teeth, you once you trace these, you'll be able to click on it and just pull it back a little and pull this one back a little. If the person says, you know, I just want my smile on there, you could at least show them, well, hey, look at this mock-up. This is what it looks like. And, you know, this is what it looks like if we put the gold, because you have a gold tooth um, there. So that's what I wanted to be able to show you is that you can put some things together. You just have to think out of the box because I guarantee you with this one here, all of this glitter you see was one square of glitter <clears throat> that was uh, overlaid on top of a pair of lips and then these lips were put on there. That's what that was <clears throat> for... Um, something like this where the teeth are more realistic, all you would have to do is do a, um, a trace on the tooth, <clears throat> which is like what I did like for this one here, for example. You'll trace it, not trace and detach. <clears throat> but if you're going to do both of them, goal, you could do trace and detach and simply change the color and then slide them right back on top of that. So that's really, it's not... Uh, uh, rocket science is just thinking outside of, of the box and um, I'm not creative by no uh, stretch so and you all are so you should be able to take this and just really work <clears throat> and just really work this the other part to it um, and then I'm going to close throat is getting me here is this whole drip and so with this drip, we have to trace. And I'm just going to say that that is um, fine. And this is if we want to layer. If you don't want to layer, then you don't even have to worry about that. You could just use a knife and cut across from it. I personally don't like this uh, line that is around it, but I'm going to say release compound path only because I just want to get my own little blocks going here. And remember, they're different. Uh, one has a little bit more blood than the other. Use this and click here, and that'll be the blood. <clears throat> and we're going, going to send it to the back. <clears throat> and try to distort it per se, meaning don't hold the shift key down. Just start dragging these handles with where you want uh, them to fit. And <clears throat> I'm almost, this one wasn't wide enough. I guess I, if I kept going that way and pushed it out to here to get the right drip pattern that uh, I'm looking for and bring these down some. <clears throat> I probably could go in here and maybe in here. That's kind of close. And then select both of them 
and group it. <clears throat> so that's it's not hard with all of the dripping stuff. You just need to find which drip uh, pattern that you like because you can make any of them drip, um, any of them at all. It's just finding that pattern and putting it behind. Um, and I probably would have just used a knife and just sliced around the corners so they wouldn't be uh, sharp and pointed, but more rounded, or just use this rounded uh, rectangle and did a crop thing <clears throat> with it. But that's all that is. So if it's a word, if if it's, you know, I don't know, Chicago Bulls or whatever, you can make anything um, drip blood. So <clears throat> I think I've covered everything. I'll bounce back to the group and kind of just wrap this up. Um, Linda, I found the lips. I find everything on Google. And I think that I said um, dripping lips, glitter, dripping lips, uh, and uh, I think that's what I used on it. After a while, I'm in there so long until I tell you, who knows what I'm putting uh, on at that, that point. Uh, puff lips with glitter, gold glitter. You know, I, I think that I'm smarter than Google sometimes, so I just throw some stuff in there and see what pops up. Yeah, up north, how you like that gold, too? If I could just find some flat foil, if you all find a link on Google to some flat foil, not the texture thing, post it in the group because I'd like to know so I can get uh, some of it. And that gold fo that foil is good for those of you who put who use foil instead of HTV uh, heat transfer vinyl on your shirts and you want to sell some foil so you need to show the person what it looks like, you need to get the foil. And that's how you would do it. It would be absolutely <coughs> no different um, to um, I'll just use my name and uh, impact. My brain can't think of anything else at this point, but the point that I'm making is whatever it is that you want to do, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, change the uh, line color here to black for it. But, a foil. I bet I got rid of all of it. That's about how Ann Huffman does it. Okay. Well, let me just steal this, cut, and go to this one and paste. <clears throat> and this line is the only thing that bothers me because I have to have something to fill my color in. But once I get it filled in, I can then... Um, where I'm trying to go is I put this, send it to the back is I could make my name drip so I'll click here and use this field color and the line color the same and I'll hold a shift key, no I'm not going to hold a shift key down I'm just going to bring this out trying to line up you know my letters with it with the drip down there at the bottom so that ah that'll have to do um here make my drips longer or whatever so it looks like my name is dripping <clears throat> uh likewise um i was going to show you and i promise i'm going going to end this. Facebook just set me free and I'm already going over my time. Um, my pattern field, but I want to click on both of these and I'm just going to group them. And I want to just click on this, for example, because this is probably as close to some of the foil as we might get. Um, 
in it. Of course, you can still arrange it. So <clears throat> and we don't get to add more gradients, but I want to get down here to camouflage. So it should be coming up as the next category here. Okay, there we go. So <clears throat> I can put it in glitter so that they see what it'll look like in this HTV color glitter. There, remember I distorted this and that's why it looks so much bigger. So you have to be really careful uh, with it. And I didn't change the color of the drip. Um, it's, that's why you see the little red in between there. So that's all it is to doing um, to doing this. Just spend some time and get the tools that you need, <clears throat> and then you can create some really neat uh, mock-ups. So, with that being said, I'm going to close it out. I think no, I don't want to save any of that, uh, and I don't want to save this. So I thank you all so much for hanging in here with me. It is recorded, so when you get bored, you can come back and watch it. I probably should have done one or two, one thing and one topic, but I figure I don't trust Facebook, so I'm going to try to get them all in at this time. <laughs> Let's see. Pastor Sheila, can you take fans and crop them in the gold background? Fans as in ceiling fans or as in church fans or wedding fans you, you can crop you can do that with any of them what i suggest is if your stick to the fan if it's the kind you fan in church um i would trace it um or trace and attach the stick from the fan so that you could make the fan in one thing uh, and the stick wouldn't automatically be the same color or pattern that the fan is. <clears throat> uh, the drips. Yes, yes. Like I say, find the drips that you like. Uh, you know, how long you want them or how thick they are or whatever. I'm really not into that. But you find what you like and find several of them. And um, then you, you know, you're tracing them. Um, uh, so you can manipulate them better, maybe, or you, if it's a print and cut. Let's see. All righty. Let's see. Okay, well, uh, that's it. So you all have a really good evening, and um, we all thank you, Facebook. <laughs>